Rose Celsa, or Rose Technics, offered me an ear-free i5 in exchange for my opinions. A rather one-sided transaction, but here we are. I don't normally mention anything about the unboxing experience because usually I don't care that much unless there's an obscene use of plastics, but this one had one big positive and moderate negative point. To open the box, you have to slide off the entire lid, which very tightly encloses another second box or bottom lid. However, once you're inside, folding out the top of the internal packaging opens up the compartment with the accessories. So clearly some steps have been made to focus on recyclable packaging with a nifty design. For this review, I will be comparing the i5 almost entirely with its predecessor, the i3, at 5999 US dollars without the Super NC200 foam tips. It is $18 more than the i3 and is well into the price bracket territory that young students would think twice about and mere pocket money change for fruit company enthusiasts. Considering the relatively meager inflation in price, the improvements are not only immediately obvious, but far more than I was ever expecting. The case is now two solid and smooth pieces of aluminium alloy and a far more elegant design, including new rounded edges and a more minimalist aesthetic. On the inside, the fit of the IEMs is more snug than its predecessor. The quality of the hinge is about the same, which is a good thing, but the color matching between the case and the buds is once again lacking. In this case, however, it's not particularly annoying or unappealing, and the so-called Tron Blue is more prominent in the buds and not something I hate, especially as by pure coincidence it perfectly matches my phone case. The i5 is also available in black, grey and champagne. The magnets holding the buds inside the case are fairly strong, but they won't prevent the buds from falling out if the case drops on the floor, for example, which is still a marked improvement over the magnets in the Ceramics X case. Most critically, the IEM shape is the biggest improvement in the whole package. The ergonomics are hugely improved, with what appears to be an extremely small change, made possible with what could be an incrementally smaller bud size and nozzles, which are definitely angled a bit differently. They now don't want to slide out of my ears when moving my jaw or walking, something that became an issue with the i3. While they look very similar, this is a brand new product on the whole. Here things actually get interesting. This thing has all the features. Starting with the boring stuff, you can choose between LDAC and AAC SBC. However, the LDAC is not always available. When dual device connection mode is activated, AAC SBC will be forced. Game mode decreases the latency, which doesn't turn off LDAC. So I can only assume that might consume more battery, but I don't see any information about that anywhere. With game mode turned on, latency is improved and things like videos become watchable and casual games become playable, but I still would not recommend it for competitive gaming. There was no noticeable latency improvement over the i3, but I think it's already getting very close to the limit of Bluetooth latency. There is a rich selection of customization available for the touch controls, which I'm happy to say work very well, and actions are more repeatable and consistent than the i3. Under lab features, you can toggle switch touch, uh, touch controls, and in-ear detection can be turned on or off. I'm quite a big fan of the in-ear detection as it pauses the music quickly after just taking one IEM out of my ears. You are also able to select which ANC modes are available for switching between using just the touch controls. In the Roselink app, there's also a tab called Square with adverts for new products from Rose Celsa and a white noise generator, in case you need something for sleeping or background noise. There is also a personal center tab, but I don't know what it does because it requires a sign-in, and ain't nobody got time for that. Continuing with the ANC stuff, the regular active noise cancelling is very solid, also reducing most random sounds quite well, and not just the constant noises of engines or traffic. The wind noise reduction is great, and about the same as what you can find on the Ceramics X. The pass-through function is actually excellent. Under normal use outdoors, 
it actually filters out background noise and focused on louder spoken voice of the person standing beside me, so there is likely some clever active limiter filter. And of course there's also the normal mode with all ANC deactivated. The EQ profiles once again use strange names. There's pop, hi-fi, rock and a new one called light. And the differences are mostly more subtle than in the previous i3 aside from the new light profile which seriously reduces all lower frequencies by up to 8 decibels. Hi-fi and pop are almost identical with slight differences in the treble and sub bass and rock audibly has less upper mid-range energy and to my ears sounds the least fatiguing. Hi-fi however sounded the most accurate. Speaking of, I'm actually extremely satisfied with the tuning of these IEMs. Compared to the i3, the sub bass is a touch softer, and the treble peak is pushed into the higher frequencies. On the whole, this quite simply makes it sound more high-end. The sound is clearer, less coloured, and a marked improvement over the i3. To make some direct comparisons, the IEMs I have heard that measure most similarly are the Kiwi Ears KE4. The i5 has thicker sub bass and less upper mid-range energy. The i5 sound is noticeably more V-shaped, making it better suited to noisy outdoor use. With a quick comparison, they just sound like slightly different tunings, with i5 also not quite producing the same level of detail as the KE4. The final audio E4000. These are very neutral compared to the i5. It's quite funny comparing these. The E4000 made the i5 sound a bit low end at first, but only because of the deliberate tuning decision to make the i5 more V-shaped. Then, after a minute, going back to the i5, the E4000 sounded a bit low end for having such weak bass by comparison. It's funny how the brain changes what it prefers depending on what order you hear things. The Simgot EW300. Especially it presented treble with greater clarity and far more detail, but a slightly muddier bass. The i5 here especially shows off its sub-bass ability. And finally, of course the most important comparison, the Rose Salsa Ear Free i3. The detail is actually about on par between the two, but because the i5 is tuned more carefully, it sounds more clear, more textured, and it's easier to hear the details. For me, the i5 gets an easy win with punchy bass and better treble definition. Overall, the sound is V-shaped on its extremes, which is perfect for noisy outdoor use, and with a subtly dark mid-range tonality compared to the most common wired IEM tunings. Staging and imaging are both above average, with neither sounding diffused or abnormal. As far as my opinions go for what is quite literally a ticking time bomb of e-waste because of the batteries which you can't replace in it, I find it difficult to give these anything but actually a solid recommendation at a fraction of the price of the market leading wireless IEMs if your minimum requirement is the minimum requirement for high-end audio quality, these almost completely fit. They have great battery life and almost all the latest wireless conveniences and features. If for that you're willing to sacrifice a touch of accuracy and detail, there is little reason to ignore these. That's it for now. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.